Hi folks. Uh, right, so I, I, I've just I've just done a tour of my my studio. To show you the mess I work in. Uh, <coughs> but it's my space. Very lucky to have it. Uh, watercolour. This is on Fabriano 130 pound uh, cold press paper. It's a good studio paper. Uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't put up with a lot of mucking about though. Uh, the the water tends to stay on the surface of the paper quite some time, unlike the more porous ones. Which I do prefer, but but they're much more expensive than than this. Uh, I can order a hundred sheets of this. It hasn't gone up too much because I can use it as a good surface for going over with uh, a bit of primer and uh, oil. So so you can get an oil painting as well. Uh, right, okay. Uh, tools of the trade. Well, we've got. Uh, large hake, the large one ransom hake, the medium one ransom hake, and this lovely little rigger that came with the uh, brushes when uh, uh, Clark. Uh, I can't remember his framing name, though. Clark. Frank Clark. I think I would just see me. Frank Clark is what is the rigger in the, in the set of three. I've got the three brushes, but I don't use them. I only use the rigger. It's worth, it was worth it for the rigger. So that's about it. Okay, so I don't know what I'm going to do. Probably a, a sort of woodland type scene. So let's wet the paper all over first. Okay, now we're going with a bit of a uh, bit of raw sienna. I, 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 I prefer to hold my palette or keep picking it up. Right. Got a bit of a uh, this one in there. Okay, uh, let's put a bit, a bit of blue in there. Okay, well that's a, some sort of sky. I can put a bit of red in there. Just add a bit of character to it. Right, okay, that'll, that'll do. All my skies are sort of abstract. I need a bit of cloth. Okay, so that's uh, soaking a bit. Now the, the paper would expand, so just. Uh, Pull it tight and re-clip it. One of the, uh, the good things about this paper is uh, that it scrapes out when it's wet. So, so you can do your rocks without actually painting them. Very good dodge. I'll, I'll, I'll try and show you that later. Uh, 
Oh, and we want to put a bit of background there. So, really. so there's some, some low hills. a bit stronger okay that's uh good luck I'm gonna put some trees in here but uh We'll uh, put in some the brush does uh, split so it just brings it together by touching it the plane's grey and a bit of burnt see I just got a bit of dark in here Nice. Right, it's okay, so I'll do for that. Let's so just uh, bring that paint down there because. If I use the large the larger uh, mounts you don't want to see the white white corners out so let's just see so look Quite effective. You can lift out roofs and all sorts, provided the paper's wet. Let's just uh, pull that tight again. Well, once it's had a couple of reclips, it uh, will stay flat. It's a very, very good paper for that. Uh, right now, let's get a bit of uh, stuff in here now. Colours, uh, I've got this this uh, beautiful cadmium yellow light, code light. Uh, so, uh, I keep meaning to, to buy some from Jackson's, here it is. It's uh, cad yellow light. Abs, that's 21mm tube. Don't buy them in, in them in less because it will save you. And, and, and those little two soon run out. Okay, so let's get a bit of a landscape over here. A bit of sienna in there. Mix it beautifully with uh, Payne's Grey. Alright, okay, this is Take that a little bit. 
fine. Now we need to put a bit of a, a break. Just want to just lift, lift out a bit. Here. Right, okay, so that's the basis of our painting. I want to put some background in though. I'm going to use, <coughs> I'm going to use the medium hake for that. Uh, so just to, so let's have a bit of Payne's Grey mixed with Ultramarine. That's always a good good mix. Touch of yellow. Oh, and then just. Payne's Grey is a very versatile colour and as you can see it gives a good impression of distance when you mix it with ultramarine well that's all I don't use anything other than ultramarine I'm used to it I used to use cobalt and cerulean but uh, I uh, been using these colours in this palette, apart from the yellow, uh, which is uh, quite a new addition to my palette. All right, look, see, we can let's just get right. I'm going to give that a try now. So take your headphones off, folks. This is quite loud. All right, ready? A bit of something on there to hide that going up there so we want a nice green let's just put that in there Over the hill there. Okay, the nice that brilliant yellow, look at that brilliant yellow look. Alright, okay, so a bit of shadow over the base of this. Bit of paint spray. Right, now we can just pull down. Well, not quite. Let's get a little bit of that so, in here. Yeah. 
Right, okay. We can strengthen that later. Let's put a bit of texture in here now. Bit of here now. Right, I'll have to scrape that out a bit better. The old hake, it does uh, wonderful things. Especially with those yellows. Right, okay. Uh, I'm going to put some large trees over here. I'll Show that we green on that side. Catching a bit of light in here. Okay, let that dry while I'll dry it. Uh, let's not put another tree or shrub, whatever. In here. Don't forget your shadows. Right, so I get the card and do just uh So he's painting them, doesn't they? Right, if I go give that, well, I'll give that a bit of a dry in a moment so that I can just put some more reflections in the water. Now this is a, uh, the only artist quality paint that I use on, on the watercolour. And I'm only using it because it was in a, a batch of paints that a friend gave me. Alright. Right, headphones off, mutual sound. Or fast forward, or whatever. Here we go.
we, we need a bit of uh, All right, let's get a bit of that blue. That red just just about shows through. Right, so I think it's a bit of wiggle work, not not a lot. It's just. Do we overdo this? Uh, I'm just going to put more of that out. Right. Boots. signature on it that's a uh, abstract I did uh, which I called uh, mind game a very colorful one 16 by 12 inches I sold that yesterday so you never know you never know what people would like Okay, I think I've finished there. I don't do anything more to that. I don't watch a lot of uh, YouTube artists, so I, I, I probably be better free. Stephen Cronin, of course, um, uh, Alan Owen, and uh, Smoothie Seventy Seven, aka John, J O N. Uh, so the thing is, if you want something so complicated as a demonstration, you, you'll just give up because you won't be able to do it. It takes quite a time to learn to do these things. Um, unless you've got a guardian angel looking over your shoulder, which I haven't. Anyway, I'll put the mount in, the double, the double mount on. There it is. Uh, just about fits, look. So there we are, another watercolour. My skies, and well, as you can see, I don't lift out anything. I don't use tissue paper in the skies. I just put it on and leave it, and it, it does this sort of thing, which is lovely. Uh, if this ever sees the light of the day, it will need a, a 15 by 12, so that you can just compress it a little bit. But uh, there we are, uh, very simple, just a few washes, simple materials. When you start, you, you tend to buy everything that's going if you can afford it. And most of it you won't need. All my watercolours are done with three brushes. Cost of those, I suppose, 20, 25 pounds. But things are going up rapidly in the UK at the moment. There's that one. My Cotman colours, they're still reasonably priced, but 21 watercolours. And a tray, and a water, so you put your water in, and a bit of masking tape, that's all you need if you're going to be a watercolour painter. And if you're going to want to be an oil painter, you're going to have to buy a few colours. 
don't waste your money on loads of colours thinking you're going to improve it's what you don't use it see oh i was the same but i didn't have the advice you're getting uh i, I bought everything at that time and and i find that i only use well brushes in in oil or acrylic what am i using uh, I, play, I don't use the rigor in doing that. I paint shapes mostly. Uh, so these, uh, these sort of brushes. For cheap, cheap. I, I paid one pound eighty for that brush in a lovely art shop in Bungay in uh, Norfolk on the Norfolk Suffolk border. And this, I've got three of them. I can't find the other two. But but you just don't need loads and loads of stuff because you'll give up. Trust me, I've been there. I, uh, I stopped doing watercolours uh, in uh, 2015, no, 2019, in the 1990s. So I had a friend who got me back onto oil paintings, oil painting, and I had, a, I, I had 80, a commission for 80 Venice paintings, Impressionist Venice paintings, <coughs> for, <coughs> oh, me, for a lovely gallery in, in Surrey and uh, there was a, a very lucrative uh, year but, but um, that all came to an end and I, I had a friend who was uh, struggling with her watercolours and she'd come here and I'd give her some free tuition and uh, we couldn't get to she couldn't get to me one uh, January January day because she was snowed in so I did a video thinking that I could just put it on YouTube on, on a on, on a, uh, email and send it but of course you can't send it's, it's too much info you have to compress it and, and, and download it onto YouTube and then create the link to, to email which is which is what I did, and and that's when I took up watercolor painting again. But I discovered Ron Manson. This is these are the one. This is all Ron Manson would use. If he did, if he did different subjects like uh, flowers, he would use uh, round pointy brushes. Um, but as I said, he's he's not with us now. But uh, I I joined the local art club, and uh, I learnt so much from demonstrations. Uh, and uh, a, a video, I saw a video of demonstrations by Ron Manson which was circulating the art club and it just changed my life. As soon as I went from sables or, or pointed brushes, silly little brushes, I made progress. I was doing impressionist painting with, with a hake. That's slightly impressionist but it's just a painting for you. Just you to get your teeth into but anyway enough from me i hope you like my tour around the studio so i'm going to edit it in as a prelude to this painting uh i'll see see you soon thanks for watching folks enjoy your day bye bye hi folks <clears throat> this is my studio uh let's, let's start here there's a bookcase with this paints on, a couple of hundred small paintings, unframed of course, uh, stamp collection, and I've got under there, under that uh, hatch, in the roof space, uh, oh, lots and lots of paintings. Uh, that's my easel. I occasionally use the studio easel, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, there's the mess I'm working. Let's go a bit of a close up on that. Oh, there's a window north facing. Oh, it's just starting to rain. Surprise, surprise. Right, there's all that. That's my oil section. That's my acrylic section. My watercolour section. Uh, brushes everywhere. Pencils. Uh, there's my radio easel, studio easel. I use that if I'm demonstrating, if I go to 
I get, get them stretching. So that's right. Uh, that was a, a knife painting of an Edward Western watercolour in Scotland. That was uh, based on a, I don't know, Marcel Deef, I think, I'm not sure. Uh, that's an original uh, Norfolk, very oh, I did that 20 odd years ago. Oil on the paper, watercolour paper. Another oil, just a simple oil. Look, here's my workbench. Look, you can see, I can't throw anything away. Look, PVA glue, I use a lot of PVA glue on the acrylics just to uh, varnish them. Wouldn't use it on the oil, of course. Got a can there of a spray varnish or retouch varnish. Uh, paintings there. There's a painting I did here, rather, rather impressionist. Uh, I quite like that. It's quite a big one, it's 24 by 24. Uh, there's a lot of the books there, that's all the Etsy stuff. Underneath there, there's a fridge there, which we used to use when we were camping in our trailer, our camping trailer. And there's the roll of paper I've just inherited from a friend. Oh, quite a rise, quite a good quality paper, and that'll last me ages. So I've got paintings there, paintings there, I've got paintings here, paintings there, underneath my workbench work table, probably a hundred paintings there. I just don't know what to do with them. I wish I'd sell as fast as I paint. That's the problem, I'm very prolific. Record collection underneath, and nothing to play them on. Uh, washing, just drying, just airing really. Very handy space. A heater there. Under there, there's another hatch, so another bit of the uh, roof space for this um, conversion. And now here, that's a trap door, or oh, access hatch, to the roof space above this room with hundreds and hundreds of paintings up there. Ten bags, ten large black plastic sacks full of paintings. So there we are, I've got a shower room toilet in there. Uh, there, there we are, this, this is my store of MDF, it's getting very depleted. Now, three millimetre and two millimetre. That's my cutting board. And that's my straight edge. Show you that straight edge. Now, can you see that scratch on there through the, through the paint? Well, that was made by the point of a, a craft knife blade standing straight over my thumb some years ago. But it's okay now. And I've got this, this bench here, I've got this table here is uh, just add just, just an old bit of MDF stuff. Uh, but somebody threw this out. So I thought, oh, I had that. It's, it's uh, not very good quality. The, uh, the, the uh, uh, ring nuts are quite soft. So that one's busted, so I need to get a couple more, really. Then I, I can tighten it all up a bit. So I've got paintings under there, and I'll keep my watercolour palette there, too. So here we are with all the mounts that I'm using. There's my chair at that donkey's ears. Uh, and there's a little sort of dumb waiter there. Uh, well, not dumb waiter, is it? Just a trolley. But it uh, came to me in pristine condition, but it's not now. So there we are. So there's my latest ab abstracts, and there's a watercolour paper affixed to my board. So there we are. So that's a, that's one video, and I've got my tablet here. I, I listen to the radio when I'm working. I've got a Bluetooth headphones there, very cheap, and more more brushes here. Uh, so look out! Oh, there's a lot of conversion going on over there. Uh, there's another street. There's I'll show you my garden. Quite quite this really. That's her garden, that's next door's garden. Uh, and that's next door's garden, all friendly neighbours. Uh, so there we are. So there's the centre of Warrington, that block of flats where... Can I see the block of flats? Uh, 
Well, somewhere in the day. Oh, yeah, there, there it is in the background. Centre of Wellington. Uh, there's a lot of conversion going on over there. They've been on there for ages. But I can't complain, so it's not mine. Uh, so it's, just, it's a bit nippy today, so just shut them. These are the blinds that I used to to draw. That one, it, it broke for some reason. These are Velux windows, but it's, it's on this twine. But I have to get somebody in to sort that out. I can't do it. And they're frightfully expensive. The uh, the, the wind, the, the, the blinds themselves. But I've got this one, there's a nice little painting there. Look, just, uh, that one. Quite like that one. But this one, that's uh, just a tone study that I did several weeks ago. Painting I do like, that I haven't shown really it was that with that knife painting of the Y Valley in uh, on the Welsh border I think uh, so there we are thanks for watching bye bye